What's up YouTube? So one of the big complaints I see regarding the Korg wave state is that it's just a bit too much. There's a lot going on. You have seven different lanes, each with 64 steps. You have four LFOs. You have four different kinds of envelopes. You have vector synthesis. You have uh, wave sequencing synthesis. You have sampling. It's uh, there's a lot going on and it can be a lot to wrap your head around. And so for this tutorial, I want to just look at how we can make sounds quickly in the Korg wave state, kind of cutting through a lot of the features just to get to just immediate kind of instant gratification of making things that sound good. So for that, we're going to bypass our wave sequencing lanes. And instead, we're going to work in multi-sample mode. So if we go to our wave sequence uh, button right here, hit select, and you can see that there's this option right at the top that says mode wave sequence. Now let's uh, scroll to the right and it'll bring us to single multi-sample. So there's only two options there, just wave sequence and single multi-sample. Let's listen to our single multi-sample. So we have a piano sound as our, our default sound. Now if we go to piano acoustic and we turn our uh, dial knob, we can then select all these other sounds. thousands of samples, ridiculous amounts of sounds. So you have a lot to choose from here. And this allows you to simply use the Korg wave state as a sampler, where you have these beautiful high quality sounds that you can load up. Let's just choose this one. You can choose any sound. We'll choose the uh, synth bass acid one. Hit enter. And now we can use this as just a, a regular kind of straightforward sampler. We have our amplitude envelope. Let's turn up the attack. Let's play with decay and sustain, release. And of course we have our filters. We have our LFOs, so you can click your filter LFO, you can play with the intensity, the frequency, our amp LFO, you can play with the frequency, the intensity. Pitch LFO. So right there, you can simply make sounds. Now, if you want the sound to be a little bit more alive, a little bit more dynamic, we can add some modulation. So I particularly like to use velocity to modulate different parameters. So if we go to mod, hold that down and hit page plus, add new modulation. So you can move a target knob or press enter to modulate the current parameter. So let's modulate, for instance, our filter cutoff. So we move that knob and source, it's waiting for our source. You hit a key and it automatically goes to velocity. And then you hit enter to continue and now we can determine the depth. So we can also use velocity to modulate the frequency for our filter LFO. So if we go and select our frequency for the filter LFO, then hit mod plus and enter to modulate the currently selected parameter. Hit a key, velocity, and now we go to intensity and we can make it pretty subtle. Let's even turn down the uh, depth of that, turn down the speed a little. 
We'll turn down our amplitude speed. We'll make this really subtle. And for our LFO, we can also have it start at a random phase, which creates a little bit more uh, dynamic effects with the LFO. We'll do the same modulation for the frequency of our amplitude LFO. So we're choosing the amplitude LFO frequency, source, hit a key, we have velocity, hit enter, and just really subtle changes. We can also, of course, add effects. So you can hear that we already have this kind of nice pad sound. And you can play a bit with the filter envelope, just using this as a kind of regular sampler. Now, if we wanted to make this sound a bit bigger, a bit more dynamic, a bit thicker, there's two ways that we can do that. One is to go to our performance button, hit shift, page plus, page plus, page plus, page plus, page plus. Now we get to the voice assign page. Here we can create multiple voices per key and detune these voices. So let's maybe make it 15, 14. Thickness, thickness determines how the detuned voices are spread. Um, a higher thickness amount emulates detuning within a, uh, an analog synthesizer. So it's not completely evenly spread through the detune amount. And then stereo, of course, changes the stereo imaging of the voices. So let's listen to that. It sounds really lush. And it took us just a few minutes to program. Now we can make this sound even thicker, even bigger by going to write. Instead of writing the performance, we'll write the program. And so choose your name. I like to choose all of my names starting with the dollar sign, which makes uh, the program the first thing that pops up on the menu. And so that makes it convenient for recalling my presets pretty easily. So save this as a YouTube demo. Enter, shift, right to write a new one. Press enter to confirm. So now we have that program saved. Now right now we're only using one layer. We're only using layer A. We can double click our layer B. Let's go into our program by going to perform and uh, the second page within our perform menu uh, allows us to choose the programs for each layer. And so we'll choose the one we just saved so that we're doubling up on that program. So here we are, YouTube demo, hit enter. So now we have two of the same program. Now we can go into our second program and we'll choose a different sound. We can adjust the filter cutoff.
We can vary the LFOs so that their speeds are slightly different. We can add a bit, a bit more detuning to our second voice. We can play with the tuning here. If we go to shift and then change our um, envelope intensity knob. We can change the key tracking. So just creating some variations between the voices so that you have a bit bigger of a sound, a bit thicker of a sound. And of course we can go to our other two layers and do the exact same thing where we duplicate that program and create kind of slight variations. You vary the sample, you vary some of the parameters and end up creating a really lush, big sound. Change the filter type. And let's finally just do this for the last layer as well. And of course you can choose a completely different sound. You can see I have a lot of programs in there. So you can use a completely different program as well. Um, so let's choose a different sample, maybe a string Lastly, I just want to show you how in the perform menu, if we move over, we can create velocity so zones for these different voices. So we can have the first one only be active for a certain range of the velocity and you can have it crossfade between these ranges as well. So really kind of powerful tool for um, creating dynamic layering that varies according to velocity. And you can do the same for keyboard zones. Um, also, one last thing, you can set uh, the vector control to change between these different layers. And so on the fourth page of the vector envelope setup, you can turn on the vector volume. And now we can Let's make sure our velocity is the same so that we can hear all of these voices. So you can play with that or you can just leave it in the center or turn off that vector volume. You can also play around with the vector envelope which uh, essentially creates motion through the different voices over time. And you can set that by simply moving the joystick. And so we can have it go through all of the voices.
here we can set the time. You can have the time be tempo synchronized as well. So we can go to mode, tempo, and we can have it loop infinitely. Let's just listen. Can have the voices be kind of closer to the center to make the effect a little bit more subtle. there you can see that just by changing our mode from wave sequence to single multi-sample and then adjusting the parameters, making a few modulations, uh, and then copying that program to our four other voices and changing their sample selection as well as adjusting the parameters a little bit differently, very quickly you can create a sound that is quite dynamic, quite thick, very alive, and um, has a lot happening without even touching the wave sequencing lanes. So this is a straightforward and relatively simple way to uh, just start making sound with this device. So I hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe. I have more to come. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.